Yeah, so welcome to this webinar about uh, business constellations, how to apply constellations in, uh, in business and what it requires from a facilitator. And that's why I call it the art of facilitation, because I think it's, it's an art. Um, a little bit about myself, born in 1970. I went to the University of Groningen, studied management and organization. Um, I worked for IBM. As a, in three years, so I, I got a taste of a large organization, but I really, well, we didn't have a good match, I could say. Then I worked for 10 years for a consultancy firm for small and medium enterprises. And that's why I, where I really got interested in entrepreneurship, in doing business. And slowly I developed more um, a psychological, spiritual perspective on doing business. In the meantime, I got married. I have two daughters. They're now 23, 21. Um, and in 2007, I started my own company, which first was just called plain Maima Coaching. And then later it became Intuitive Ondernemen, which is Dutch for intuitive entrepreneurship. Um, and in 2016, I started an international branch or well, just international website, actually, Business Intuition. Um, and there I combine my management and, and organizational background with marketing, uh, processes, organograms, uh, structures, um, entrepreneurship with more psychology, um, non-duality, um, uh, shamanism and constellation work. It's a, quite a big part, but it's not only constellations I do. I do a lot more. I had a background in professional intuition, so I trained myself how to use your, your pure intuition. So that's also something that I teach in my trainings because you can really use that in facilitating constellations. Um, and, and what I do, that's also what's something you see here. I, I well, Nika Binkhorst was my trainer back in 2008. Um, and she already combined more the intuitive work and the energy work with constellations, business constellations, family constellations, organizational constellations, systemic constellations, all kinds of constellations. Um, and then I went and did a lot of workshops with different people. These are just a few of my teachers and I pick up something from everyone and I combine that in my own unique way of facilitating. But this also means that I, I'm not true to a specific school. For me, there's no right or wrong in facilitating because I've seen people facilitate in many different ways and I've seen them doing it a lot different from me, but still I thought, wow, this is so powerful. So uh, for me, there's no good nor bad. Um, yeah, since 2008, I'm, I'm facilitating constellations. In 2014, I started teaching others. Also, so it was interesting because somebody said, oh, why don't we give a training for, for people that want to become a facilitator? And I thought, wow, am I ready for that? But I was ready and people were very enthusiastic. And since 2017, I started to do this also um, internationally. And in 2019 or 20 or 2020, um, when COVID hit, I thought, wow, how can, what can I do? And then I brought this whole training online and actually, it worked quite well. I was very surprised. So um, I will explain also a little bit about hey, how that works and, and, and um, yeah, um, what the benefits are. And in the end, this is my mission. Um, I really like people to do a different way of doing business, a more feminine way of doing business, more holistic way of doing business, intuitive way, whatever you call it. But it means working from a consciousness of unity and wholeness um, and using intuition and two intuitive methods to create success in the broader sense. So not only money, but also connection, fulfillment. Um, and in that way, also aligning businesses with the needs of people and the planet. So not only making profit, but profit is a result. I mean, money is also interesting and we need money in this world we have created. Um, yeah, and this is why I do what I do. And constellation work is, is a part of what I do. Um, the basics of constellations, well, Bert Hellinger, yeah, I think he was the first one who created constellations in the way we see it now, we do it now. Um, and he uses representatives and that's a 
different from other methods because he says somebody he put somebody in the field or a representing a father or mother that's how he started and people can just feel sense everything that is important for the question that that person that uh, he, he or she represents can feel there's also spatial information because people are uh, close to each other farther away from each other um, and there is what we call the feel the energy the uh, something intangible but which is is very present and that you can use in your constellation work um, the spatial information is interesting because if you do it online you need to find ways to, to compensate for the non-spatial information because if we use the zoom screen um, yeah we don't know who is standing behind who sometimes it is not important and sometimes i use uh, for example figurines or an online tool where you can have this more spatial information included and then what they did it's not only Beth Hellinger but also uh, Jan Jakob Stam did a, a lot of work there um, they created a systemic approach um, and I'll explain a little bit more about the systemic approach here because even without doing constellations you can look at systems uh, and organizations people uh, teams whatever in a systemic way and one of the things is that there are three what Bert Hellinger calls consciences and Jan Jakob Stam calls them survival mechanisms so there is the unit survival mechanism which makes sure that the unit being a person or a team within a larger organization or the larger organization within the um, the industry or so it's it's the one part of the system how it belongs to the the larger system so it's really about belonging it's about surviving within the system and that's where loyalty and guilt come in and innocence it's how yeah to survive i become loyal to the system i i do things that make me feel innocent but in another context they might be i feel I have to feel guilty uh, because in some context some systems require me to be very expressive and very outgoing and other systems in other system it's better to be very silent and no, almost non-visible in some systems i can kill even somebody because it's a very good thing to do that because i saved the i saved the, the, the group um, but in other context that's not done not um i feel guilty about that so also in in organizations people come from a family system and then when they enter the organizational system they have these loyalty conflicts because in one system they do one thing and in the other system they need to do out something else so sometimes when there are issues in a team it is about these two um, these two systems that require something different from a person and here we have well most of the people use the three forces three principles in systems that the system wants to be whole there is a natural order in systems so there is this uh, hierarchy i love to i rather call it an order um, and there is exchange there is giving and taking um, and this needs to be balanced and everything needs to be included and if that's not then there will be dynamics and what we call patterns and entanglements and on the surface we call this problems so when when you're a consultant and you go into a business and oh, we have a problem it is already interesting to see so my it might have to do that we exclude something or that we uh, don't look at something uh, yeah we exclude something we don't have a, um, a certain part of our history or maybe we are excluding some some person or, or from the past or even the founder or we exclude some of our um, the effects of our of our business on the on the world um, so I've seen many things that could be excluded in a in a business and that's something we dive deeper into when we do the training so what can be excluded and how yeah how can you include it again or there's something with a natural order that uh, for example there's hierarchy of course in organizations but mostly that's not the most important order the most important order often is well uh, seniority how long have you been with the team or um, age also in organizations there is an age order and then there is exchange giving and taking so it's and then yeah I, I make this movement of of giving and taking it's, it's a it's a 
dynamic balance. It's never balanced. It's always imbalanced, actually, because I give a little bit more and you give a little bit more back. And then I take a little bit more and then I give a little bit more. And this way we have this positive exchange uh, flow. And then there is what we call the evolutionary conscience or evolutionary um, survival mechanism, geist, spirit, mind, different words for the same thing. And it's the, the larger force in the world that creates and destroys systems without, well, uh, judging them, but just like COVID, like wars, like um, the financial crisis. And that's where the emerging future, that's more from the um, presencing, what is it called? Well, yeah, the presencing from Otto Scharmer. He called it the emerging future and the planned future uh, where they, they meet. And that's very interesting also in organizations because we have all kinds of plans. We want something, we have a future that we envision. And at the same time, there is something coming, something coming at us like waves coming at the beach. And um, yeah, if, or, if an organization can deal with, with those forces and with this emerging future and be flexible, it's much more successful than when it's only looking at this planned future and, and, and really gets disturbed when, when something else happens, like in 2020. Um, can I just ask a question? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the yeah. evolutionary con conscience, uh, guys. <laughs> um, actually, we could call it, call it nature as well, I think, just the way nature works. Mm, I think, yeah, I think you could call it. I think Bert Hellinger is, used to be a priest. So I think he, 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 this is more like a god or Allah or Brahman. For, and, 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 but I think nature is also a good word for it. Yeah. So it's actually some, some larger force that we all have to surrender to. Um, in, in my book, The Effortless Entrepreneur, I also have one chapter about surrendering because mm, yeah. also from this concept, it's there is something larger that we cannot influence. That's yeah. just there. And that's nature also. Yeah, there is yeah. nature is also. Or there. life. Or, uh, life. Or, yeah. or, or just life, maybe. Just yeah. life. Yeah, it's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> or fate. <laughs> I don't know. Fate. Yeah. Well, fate is, is just a small part of it, I, I think. A lot. A lot. Yeah, fate. Yeah, that's a small part of... Um, of this evolutionary conscience. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Because this is actually the whole systemic uh, approach is, is in, in this one, one image. And I really like Anita Schelling. I don't know her, but I found this and I thought, wow, this is in one image. She has explained it all. Okay. So that's the systemic approach. And then we have constellation work. And it's always interesting, but I like to split it up in steps. Although the constellation process is not a step-by-step -step process, but at the same time, it, it helps to, to see it that way. So first you have what we call the interview. So there's a question owner, somebody who has a question and you just ask, okay, so what's the question? What are we gonna look at? And instead of coaching or consulting, we're just finding the facts. What are the facts and what is it that we need to, uh, what do we, do we want to find out and what stakeholders are there or what elements are we going to use? But in, in, in business terms, I call it often stakeholders, but it could also be, um, yeah, stakeholders like a, a, a building or money or something like that. And then we choose the representative. So who is or what is going to represent it and represent what? And then we're going to place them either in the room or when we do it one-on-one, -on -one, we can also do it on a table. We can do it online. Um, for example, by having somebody step on floor markers, or we can have it online by somebody just standing in the zoom screen. So that's also with zoom or with also with teams, or you can have people stand up and then represent some, what some of the elements or one of the elements. And then we, what I call, we observe what is shown. So here, this is already a little bit more, um, yeah, like an art because yeah, you can ask a representative, what are you experiencing here? What do you feel? What do you sense? Um, and you can ask them to follow their movement. So they, then there's this moving image, people move, they react. And um, 
here we already see the dynamics. We see the entanglements. We see all kinds of information. And then depending on the school people come from, some people are very directive and they say, okay, now I know what it is. And then you need to go there. You need to go there. Others really like to let it evolve and see what happens because we might not really see, we might think that we see and know what is happening, but we might not um, see the depth of it. And then we have what we call systemic interventions. Those are interventions that you can do to, well, bring more peace in the constellation, to include what was excluded, to rearrange the order, to deal with the exchange. So it's going back to these three principles also again. And then the last step is finishing up. It's like thanking everybody. Um, in businesses, I also use this, pr this step to to talk about the constellation. What did we learn from it? What are we gonna take with us? How are we gonna use this in our team? What are we gonna do differently? What kind of actions do we take from this constellation? So that's more than with family constellations. Family constellations are more therapeutic. Yesterday I had a whole day with family constellations for businesses um, and there we didn't talk about the constellation because it really is a, is a subconscious process. Um, which when you talk about it, you just almost stop the process. But in businesses, you can really talk about it. So these days we have many, many kind of, or, or, of, of constellation work, career, illness, organization, marketing, strategy, relationship, teams, well, what name it, and you can almost constellate it. So that's also a very interesting um, time that, that People are really experimenting also a lot with constellation work. So um, on one side, there's no certification process. There's no quality control. I know that John Jacob Stamm has been asked by Bert Hellinger to create a, a quality control system for, for constellation work. And he said, no, I'm not going to do that. Because if I do that, then we, we really, um, I'm playing God or I'm playing, I'm, I'm positioned in a, in a place that I don't belong. And well, in a way that creates a lot of also uh, what we call, yeah, bad facilitators. But I think most of it is, is very good because we have a very diverse group of, the, of, of, of facilitators that do different things in different ways, which really enriches the field. You can do it with a group. That's the traditional way. Somebody has a question, there's a group of people and we do the constellation work, but you can also do it with tabletops floor marker, so piece of paper on the floor. You can do it in somebody's um, mind, uh, visualization. You can do drawings and you can do it online. Um, so there are different ways to do it online. You can really do it one-on-one, -on -one, which is I already did before COVID, but you can also do it in a group. Like when we are here with a screen, with the Zoom screens, you can just say, okay, who's representing what? And then what are you experiencing here? And you can combine it. So you can also have like uh, people having these little figurines on the table and that every person is, is representing one of the figurines. And then we can move the figurines depending on what the representative is saying. Um, so in the online training, we focus on online, of course, and we focus on one on one. So with the tabletop and the floor markers. In the in-person training, I really also include group constellation work, uh, also floor markers, tabletop. Um, and and we and also online because most mostly I also have an online module so you you do and the the, the, the in person and the online uh, how to do it online and like I said there are different ways of facilitating there are fixed formats where there are like set um, uh, representatives and even like where they should stand there is a silent constellations where we don't talk at all. Some have a fixed intervention, like if this happens, you need to do A, B, C. Some are very directive and, and I like the intuitive one. I'm more the intuitive, but I also like the silence and sometimes I use a fixed format. Um, and I also, I'm sometimes also a little bit directive, like, okay, now when you do this or can you say that? So I combine these, but, but mostly I'm very intuitive and I like to yeah, yeah, feel the field, see it, what ha what needs to be done. Some differences between the family and business constellations. It's good to realize that 
um, when you do it more in a business context, it becomes more complex because there are many more systems involved and the family is like the family system. Um, in the business, you have a goal or purpose mostly, and um, or the business has a goal or purpose and family system just is. Um, and like I said, there's an input for discussion in, in a business constellation. And in family constellations, there's not much, much talking. I've had a discussion with somebody like, should there be emotions in, in business constellations? And he said, no, no, no emotions. And I thought, well, we're working with people and where there's people, there, there there's emotions. So um, I also see that there's a lot of emotions or not a lot, but there's emotions in, in business constellation because what we do with constellation work is we open up a new, um, a new field. We open up a new uh, area where, where when we are in our minds and talking and understanding, we, we don't go there. We, we cannot reach that area. And when we do a constellation, something new is opened up and that's more a very a vulnerable, emotional, um, and very personal space that we open. So it, it almost always touches people because it is so true and it's so close to who we are. Um, and that's also the good thing I like about it because we make a business is more human again and more, yeah, more human. So why should you use business constellations? So it's also a good way and we also focus a little bit on that in the training. So how can we sell business constellations? Yeah, I always like things to be quick and easy. And actually it is quick. Easy is maybe not a good word, but in, a, in one hour, one and a half hours, you really have a lot of insight already that normally would take like half a year to do all kinds of research and talk to people. And even then you might not get the real information. And here you, you really, it's so transparent and there is no, hidden agendas anymore, which is also quite confronting for some people, but that's the interesting part. And constellations already start a movement. It's not that the constellation shows something and we need to uh, take it and do something. We can, but there's already something set in motion. And that also means that we don't, even if we don't do anything, um, the world has already changed. It gives people an embodied experience, which makes it in one, it's, it's a little bit vulnerable and, and strange. And at the same time, it really enriches the way we act and react and, and, and deal with each other. So it's also good for teams, but in, in organization people to, to experience that there is more than just our mind. And like I said, it opens new doors because sometimes people get stuck in all kinds of yeah, solution finding, but they cannot find it anymore because it is somewhere else, it's, it's in, a, in a different layer. And we open that layer and open new doors. And it helps for, for teams to communicate in a different way because this systemic view and the systemic wordings, what we use and the, um, it really is a different way of communicating. And, and by doing that, you help teams also to, to connect in a different way with each other. Yes, and they learn and, and experience that there is a different layer that they can use in their business and use in their team. Well, basically, when do you use it? When there are complex problems with a lot of uh, variables, a lot of players, a lot of stakeholders, and when problems repeat. Okay, so we fix it here and then it appears somewhere else or it appears two weeks later again or one year later again. Um, that's so that's in general. And then it could be strategy development, marketing, team development, leadership development, personal development, mediation, and all kinds of varieties. So here you also see that like with strategy development, it's really more business oriented. And when we do personal development or leadership development, it's more personal um, oriented. So the family system, it will be more often become a family constellation because we do take our family systems into the business. Um, and that's something also we will look at in the, in the training. So how to deal with the family issue when you are in doing a business constellation. Sometimes you can include the family and do a family constellation, uh, but sometimes that's just not what they are here for. But well, um, 
that's not what <laughs> when a constellation does. It doesn't go, uh, it doesn't adjust to what we are here for. It just shows what needs to be shown. But then we can say, okay, so it, apparently there's something in the family system of the owner or of the of the founder, uh, which is influencing the way we work here. Um, and that's something then what you can deal with with the founder or with the with the manager in a, in a different uh, context when we uh, have a one on one session, for example. So what makes a good facilitator, in my opinion? It's about connection, connection with yourself, connection with your ancestral field, connecting with the earth with the universe, with well, the source, and connecting with the field, the energy of the, of the question. And then <laughs> a good facilitator lets go of everything. And this is quite hard, even for me, even now. Um, so without judgment, what we call the empty center, and well, we'll learn in the training how to get there and what it is, but also that you have no goal which is very interesting because you're hired to do something. You're hired to solve a problem. And then it says no goal, but also no fixing. So we don't want to fix anything. Um, and the, the good thing is that without that goal and without the fixing, that what needs to happen happens. And that way you will find that it might even be better or, 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 or more beautiful than you could imagine. But it really requires from you that you don't go into the fixing or, oh, I have a goal. I need to go to that goal. You need to go into the not knowing uh, and maybe also endure suffering, pain, tension. Um, so that's, and that's also something we, we will pay attention to in, in the training. The training, um, I assume that you already have done some personal development work because some trainings, there are two years, three years, and they do a lot of personal development work. And here for my, me, it's five days or four days in an online module, or it's even five online modules for the online training. But we do pay a little bit of attention to this personal stance, to this personal uh, issues that you might have and how to, how to deal with, it, with that as a facilitator. And then I think a good facilitator also holds the space. Heather Platt has written a beautiful book, The Art of Holding Space. Um, and again, it's about no judgment, but it's also about taking the lead and offering structure because that also holds the space. But most of it is also energetically holding the space, creating a container wide enough for everything to be included and, and all, uh, how do I say, all transformations to, be, to, to, to happen. Um, and well, somebody will have a larger space holder than others, so it's 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 well, it's up to you, uh, and 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 it's it's always a good match with your client. So if you have a very small space that you can hold, that's okay because you will get clients that 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 need a transformation within that space. Um, but in the end, to to be able to to serve more clients and to do more things in more businesses and with more kind of topics, and that's also what I like about the international. Um, aspect of my work because you get a lot of different energies, different systems, different histories. So you will, and if you can deal with that, you, you also broaden your, your holding space capacity. And you use your pure intuition. So not your gut feeling. Gut feeling is not intuition. Um, intuition is clear seeing, clear knowing, feeling, hearing, smelling, and tasting. So it's these intuitive chan uh, channels that you can use when facilitating. And that's also something I pay attention to in my trainings, online and in person. Any questions about this? No? Okay. Um, a little bit about what I call intuitive facilitation. Somebody calls it the new constellation way. And Bert Hellinger developed himself from like a very directive constellator where he just said, okay, you stand there, you stand there to a more um, intuitive new way of constellating. And it's about surrendering to the field. So it's not you who 
decides, but it's you connecting with the field and letting the field decide through you. It's less control and less taking the lead. So it's more following and at the same time taking the lead because you are the facilitator. There's a lot of silence and spontaneous movements. In my constellations, people can always move to just see what happens because in the movement immediately you see uh, the effect of a sentence or the effect of somebody saying something or, or, so, or somebody making a move and everything is moving. And the effect is that we don't understand everything. Yesterday also I had like, okay, so this, this, I split like a part of somebody. He had like this had a strong thinker within him. And I had a representative for this thinker, but it, it apparently was like in two parts. It was one part that belonged to him, but one part that belonged to somebody else. So we also put this somebody else in the constellation, but he got confused. He said, I don't know who this is. I don't know what that part is. And I said, okay, let it go. It doesn't matter if you know who this is, but just realize that's one part of your thinker within you is not yours. So can you see that? And so we have to give up some of our understanding and, and, and of our knowing. And we use the intuitive guidance and intuitive knowledge. So what is the art of facilitation? It's about polarity. So it's a process, like I said, the seven steps, and it is chaos. It's, it's waves and it's just iterative and it's not even linear, not even circular. It's whatever it is. And you lead the constellation, like I said, because yeah, you hold the space, you decide what to do and when to do it. And you follow, you follow the field mostly, your intuition. You surrender to this larger uh, energy. It's about intuition. In the beginning, I didn't even know a lot about the systemic theory. I just used my intuition. And later I added this intuitive knowledge or this, this also non-intuitive non knowledge. And that really helps to, um, how it works for me is that I re read a lot of books about the constellation work and I do a lot of workshops and all this information is just stored somewhere in my system. And then intuitively, I get, oh, okay, this is information I need now. Okay, maybe this sentence could be said, or maybe I should do this, or maybe this is about an inner part, or maybe this is, so I get all the information at the right time by using my intuition, but it's really about also getting a lot of knowledge. And it's about, you know, so, oh yes, I know, but then always in a constellation I have this moment where I say, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what to do. And then I know that it's, I'm in the right uh, place because then I'm not knowing and I'm just surrendering and just opening up to whatever wants to evolve. And especially with business constellations, it is a tool. It's a management tool that you can use. When I put that online, people really get a little bit, uh, well, angry at me be like oh it's not a tool then you you don't know what constellations are but it's a tool you can just use it to find out do i need to do this or that do i need to invest here or not do we need to merge this or not do i need to hire somebody or not it's it's a tool and it's a ritual it's a it's a ritual where we meet each other at a deep, deep deeper layer where we uh, surrender to something we use our intuition so it's both All right. Any questions for now? Let me. Are you ready to do a constellation yourself? You will need three pieces of paper. So if you don't have them, please grab three pieces of paper. We're going to do it a little bit different than I had in mind, so, but it doesn't matter for you. <laughs> and this is a way I use constellations with groups and also online. It's that nobody has a real question, but you're all, all here because you will have something with facilitation of constellations. So that's well, my assumption. So then I create a, a constellation format where we have a fixed 
number of, of uh, representatives. And the first one is I, you or me or whatever in your own language or your name. So you write one piece of paper and you write your name on it or I in your language. And it needs a direction because if we put the papers on the floor, we need to imagine that there are people standing there. So you can draw a nose or eyes or, or an arrow the way that it's, it's facing. Um, and then I would like you to write not knowing. So because that's also something that's important for a facilitator is the not knowing. And it's interesting to, to explore how do you relate to not knowing. And then I would like you to write one piece of paper, uh, control. That's maybe the opposite of the not knowing. It's not told completely the opposite, but the control is also something that I, I sense in many people, they want like some kind of control in a constellation. So this way we're gonna explore, how do you relate to these polarities? So what we do now is that you go in your room and you select three places. So you take one piece of paper representing I or control or not knowing, and you place them in the room in a way that you sense or think that they should be as if you were placing three people. So you place three people in the room and underneath you, their feet, you put the piece of paper. That's how, how this works. Yeah, you can turn off your video, no problem. And also make sure that they, they face the right direction. Or right one that there is a direction. And then you step on your own piece of paper because we start with ourselves and, and even there you don't focus on the others yet. You first, when you step on the piece of paper, um, you sense, yeah, you sense, what do I sense within my body? Um, and you can also do it on the table if you like, then you need smaller pieces of paper and you put them on the table and you can touch the piece of paper. So when you touch the piece of paper, instead of stepping on it, you become the representative. So first it's okay, how, how, how am I sensing, what, what am I sensing for myself here in this field with these two polarities? And then you can, select, can um, yeah, well, investigate or explore, how do I relate to these two? Am I attracted more to one than to the other? If I connect with one, what kind of connection is that and how do, does my body react? And what about the other one? So here you can already sense like, okay, this is the not knowing doing with me and this is the control doing with me. And again, imagine two people standing there. So you might even look them in the eyes, but. And I always advise to open your eyes during constellation. If you close your eyes, you make a different constellation within your mind, which is perfectly okay, but that's not what we're doing here. Okay, then you step off this piece of paper and you step on the piece of paper saying control. Let's start with control. And again, face the direction that you put the piece of paper. So you face the direction and you step on the piece of paper with control. And sense, how is it here? How do you, what do you sense here? How is it for you? You can also sense the difference, the difference between when you step on, stepped on your own piece of paper now on control. How does your body feel different? How does your mind act differently? And I, I always keep saying and keep on breathing because sometimes things get a little bit tense and then we stop breathing. So keep on breathing and that way you will just, um, it's, it's easier to sense. Yes. Can I move them? Okay, yeah, that's a good question. If you feel a movement from standing standing up them, uh, on them, you can move them, yeah. Okay. So not from your head, but if you stand there and you feel like you move, you want to move, then you move your body and, and you also move the piece of paper 
along with the body. You can also turn a bit. Yeah, very good. Thank you for the question. And after you've moved, you can check again. How is it now? Is there any difference? And then you step off this piece of paper and you step on the not knowing. And again, what do you sense here? How is it different from the other positions? Do you feel a movement? Then you can make the movement. How do you relate to the other two? How do you relate to yourself? Very interesting. How do you relate to control? And you don't have to understand it. It's really about being in the moment, sensing what there is and well, if you understand, it's okay. And if you don't understand, it's also perfectly okay. And also the movement. You, you don't have to know why you want to move somewhere. You just feel in your body, oh, my feet want to move. Or my body is just falling to a certain position. And then you step off this piece of paper and you finally step on your piece of paper again. And you sense how is it now, now that you have heard the others and that they have maybe have moved? How do you relate to them now? How do you feel? What do you sense? And maybe you also feel a movement here. Then you can also move your own piece of paper. And here you might also like one of the systemic interventions is the movement and one of the systemic interventions is, is healing sentences. So you might want to say to both of the others, I see you. And then really sense, do, we, do you really see each of them, the control and the not knowing? And can you also say you belong here? Because it's not about not knowing is good and the control is bad. They're both there. Maybe they're even part of you. There is a part of you that wants to have control and there's a part of you that wants not knowing. But if you can say you belong, it really is including the both polarities within you. Okay. And then sense again, how is it for you if you, after you have said that you've moved, how is it now in your body, in your mind, in your emotions? Okay, and then you can finish the constellation by thanking the representatives and taking away the papers again, putting them on top of each other. I always have a little ritual to finish the constellation. Otherwise, it's like this energy field is still there. Um, so there's a way of closing the constellation. And then you can, well, if there are any questions, if you want to share something, you can do it in the chat, but you can also just ask a question or share something if you like. Anybody? Lovely experience, Iona says, okay. And this is just a small constellation. Um, I also do this in groups where we have like three groups of three, for example, and then one is representing not knowing and others control. And then you have these dynamics, like the people move and they look into each other's eyes and they do it in complete silence. So it's a very good way. And you can do that with 90 people because then you have three people times 30. And then we do it three times. So everybody gets a constellation, which is about five, 10 minutes. So like in 15 or 20 minutes, we have like 90 constellations. It's very interesting to do that. 
Deeply insightful, Simona. Okay, cool. Yeah. So here you see already the power, like this very small constellation. It's like not even 10 minutes, three elements. And you already get deep insights. Yeah. Yes. Um, do you always use polarities? No, no. I also use different things. I, like if it's um, a business for marketing, I use the client, your marketing channel and you, for example. Or um, you could use, if you do this in a team, you can have like me, uh, the purpose of the team and the change we have to go through. Or I sometimes sneak in the family system, like, okay, we have to be more client oriented. And then I have a representative for that in my family system, which is blocking me from doing this. That's depending on the group, but um, yeah. Okay, welcome Elena. We're just at the end of the of the, of the webinar. Uh, we just did the constellation. And well, if there are any more questions, le please let me know. I would have a question. Yes, Simona. Um, from your experience, um, what are the organizations uh, ready to um, ready to welcome business constellations what makes an organization ready to yeah there are two two things I can answer this. here yeah there one is that they are are as ready as you are and what I see is that the world is a reflection of your inner world so if you're not ready then the business is not ready so that's one so it's really about you really believing and, 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 and that this is good for the business and this is helping. And what I see is that mostly it works in IT. It works quite well because people are really, for some reason, open-minded uh, in, in, in a nonprofit, in healthcare, in municipalities, but also like in banks. I know that here in the Netherlands, they do it a lot for the banks. Um, so and because well they have been around for 20 years 30 years now so many people already have done family constellations and then they are like a manager in a team and they hear oh can i do this in a team also so once i did it for this healthcare organization and the, the manager said well i'm only here because i've done family constellations so i know the power otherwise i would never have done, have done it so it yeah so, it's about you, how ready you are, but also about how ready the world is. And I think it's getting more and more ready. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. Then I would like to share a little bit about my trainings. Oh, this was what we're... Okay, this was what also what you could do. Business constellations, my clients, and then do the same thing. So... You know, you can do two constellations. So if you, after the, the, the webinar, you can do this one. It's, it's exploring how do you relate to business constellations and how do your clients relate to business constellations? A little bit of a marketing constellation. But I like to do the, the other one. With you, so. Um, so this is the structure of the five-day training. But it's interesting because it's already evolving in a four-day plus an online module. So, um, well... <laughs> So first it's like the basics. It's the floor, working with floor markers, the interview, but we also do the group dynamics because we here we are a team. Um, so here we can already do some systemic interventions that we normally do in teams. So it's a good, a, good, a good way of practicing that. And then we really dive in and we work with people as representatives, tabletops. We find out what kind of system dynamics are there in organizations. Um, and then there is a day which is really more about the inner stance. What is your pure intuition? How do you get to the empty center? How do you sense? And then, yeah, and this also depends on the group. Sometimes we really focus on teams or more on strategy, uh, fixed format constellations, but there are def many different ways uh, and different areas that we can dive more deeper into. Um, and then, well, in the online, it's more how, do to, how to do this online. But also there we can look at how to sell them, um, how to work with silent constellations. And 
well, maybe even in the four days, we will invite a real client. But sometimes we have people from larger organizations where we can really work with this large um, organization dynamics. Because if we work only with consultants and therapists, which happens quite often, then they all have this very small business. And, and then I invite like a manager of a larger organization. Also online, I do that. Um, and the thing is, you, 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 you practice a lot because this is how you learn. You practice a lot. I do give some demos and there is some theory uh, and the practicing you do with each other. So you also develop a lot of or you learn a lot about your system and your business system and the way you can. Yeah, what's happening in the undercurrent in your business. So, um, yeah, it, it, there's a lot of uh, learnings from this um, five day training. Like Lachisar says from Bulgaria, um, he feels felt skilled to embed constellations in my training and coaching practice. So after these five days or four days in the online module, you can facilitate. Of course, you need to practice more and maybe you need to learn more. But the idea is that you can already facilitate constellations. And you have improved your intuition. So for me, that's also an important part. And um, well, today I also talked to somebody and I said, um, being a facilitator is actually, the, and all the skills and, and attitude that you need, it's also very helpful. Sorry, there's somebody, can you turn up the microphone? Okay, um, sorry, there was some noise here. Um, so being a facilitator and the skills you have there, you can also use that in your business because that's also about not knowing, surrendering, uh, feeling and using your intuition. You can use it in your life. So it's more a life journey where you learn how to facilitate than that is really like only lessons to be a facilitator. And like I said, you looked at your own systems, your family system, but also your business systems. Oh. Yeah, like Anita says, I really got much more than I expected. Um, it's so much more than just, <laughs> just for my organization. Um, yeah. A new order was established in my heart. I like the way she, she mentioned that. Um, and <laughs> another thing that uh, somebody said in the training in the, where you were, Victoria, I like that also that, well, some things have not reached my head yet. So it's still there, but it has not reached my head. So there's also a lot happening that we, we don't understand. Yeah, so well, the, the specifics of my training is that you do a lot of practicing. That in many other trainings I've heard that there's not a lot of practicing. I really teach the intuitive approach where I also really invite you to do it in your own way. Uh, and that's because I also have many backgrounds from many teachers that I, there's no one good way that I believe in. I do adjust them to your needs. So if you say I want to dive more into this topic or in this sentence context or this or that, uh, I, 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 well, I, I adjust my training. Yeah, and I, I also like to have a little bit of fun, um, but also go deep. But it's also light. I, I like to 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 keep the lightness of of, of life in, in in also in constellations, and it's business focused. It's not always business constellations because sometimes we do need to look at the family system, but it's always related to a business context. Yeah, that's also what Pierre said. I needed a training that was both suited to me, to the corporate environment where I operate and still human and soulful. And that's what I really like to do is make this combination of soulful, spiritual, and at the same time, down to earth, business oriented. Um, yeah. Okay, so the coming possibilities. Online basic training starts February 23rd. Um, so if you feel like doing an online training, that's a possibility. Then in March, I will go to Cyprus and there will be a hybrid training where we have four days in Cyprus and an online training. And I have an extra bonus for the first 10 people that sign up. And that's that you get access to four of my master classes. So, and then there is a training in Bucharest. So the one, I don't remember your name from, yeah, I think Simona, yeah, you were from Bucharest. So. Um, and then again, you also get, uh, for the first 10 people get this access to the master classes. 
And then for the Dutch people, I have a deepening course for people that have already done constellation work, and, uh, have some training. I have one in Dutch, the June the 4th and 5th. Yeah, if you go to this website, intuition-in-business.com slash events, you get all the events and all the uh, trainings that I offer. I do have a global attendance service, which I need to spell right, I see, because that is a wrong spelling, um, because I like as many people as possible to join. So online, I have different time zones. The next one is in the mornings. So that's more for the uh, Europe, Middle East and uh, Australia but sometimes do it in the evenings, which is more good for the Americas. I also have discounts for people with lower income. And I pay that from a 5%, uh, which is included in, in all the attendance fees. But I like yeah, to make it possible for everybody. Contact me if you want to use that. This is my email address. You can find me on Facebook, LinkedIn, and you can sign up for my three business intuition tools to boost your business. Uh, and then you also get my newsletter. Any questions, any remarks? Yes. Um, how about, how is this related in your view to systemic coaching? Is it the same thing we're talking about here or do you Yeah, it's that? the same thing actually. Well, not the same thing. No, systemic coaching doesn't use constellations. So they use the systemic approach and the, the consciences, the, the forces, um, but they use it in, in, in uh, coaching. So they ask questions um, to find out if is everything included. I really like to use the constellation work because it shows things that we don't know. But I know people that can are really good at this systemic coaching, which also works very, very well. Um, uh, Seeds Bucker. She has written a book, Systemic um, Moving Questions. And those are questions that are, are systemically, uh, they, they touch this systemic layer. So it's a very good book in, the, in English. It's, you can find it on Amazon, Moving Questions. If you want to do more systemic coaching, yeah. And there's a book by Jan Jakobstam and Bibi Schroeder, which is called Systemic Coaching. Yeah, so it is, has the same principles, but it, they, they don't use the constellation work. Any other questions? You can put them in the chat or open your mic. Um, yes. The training that you are mentioning about professional uh, intuition is something that we can find on your uh, or is that something that uh, is a train a part the training a special a training um, separate training sorry or is yeah, something it's a separate integrated training that I did before I did the constellation trainings okay it's, okay it's like it was a training to become an aura reader and so it was actually a three year training where one the first year is self healing so we were only okay. healing ourselves and stuff like that so so it's not something that you are uh, delivering it's something no, that is integrated no, it's part, in a little part bit of, part of the yeah, okay. The training we do focus a little bit on constellation. Okay. Yes, bye. So yeah, if you want to leave, feel free to leave. Thank you very much. And if you want to stay and ask more questions, then um, I'll I'll be here. So yes, Gunilla. I'm just I'm just curious about the five day format. Oh, thank you. I'm leaving. Yes. Okay. Bye, Yoka. Bye. 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 <laughs> yes. What are you curious about? Well, um, well, the, the length or the shortness of it. The shortness of it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is five curious? days, right? Sorry? I mean, and, and there is no prerequisite that you have no. family systems background or? No. No, it's very interesting because I understand where you're coming from. And I've been thinking about, should I have like prerequisites? But what I see, and I just talked to, to Janine. Janine is giving the, like the International Constellation and Conference Liga Bay or whatever it is, yeah. Yes. Mm. Um, and she said, and I also find it that people without any experience and a lot of experience, and they go together in a training, and it gives like magic combinations and and questions that we normally don't get, and then depth. And everybody, what I see is everybody has their own starting point. 
and they grow in a way that they need to grow and everybody grows their own way and, and, and starts somewhere and ends somewhere and it's not like you need to do something before you can do something else so and in five days, like if you have no experience at all and never done any personal development work, the five days, well, I don't think that you can really facilitate that. But I see that a lot of people have done some development work here and there, and they have done some NLP or therapy or therapeutical work. And then in the five days, you can really uh, learn the basics. And then it's going out into the world and practicing. So that's how I see it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can you say something about it for Victoria? Because you have done the five days with me and also doing a longer training with Bert Hellinger. Yeah, um, sure. Um, I really loved about the training that it really was a lot of um, practice. Okay. Uh, so every day or out of those uh, four or five, we, we practice. And also what I loved, it was that the, um, the space that was created and the people that came, it was very diverse with different background. And everyone this was so unique and has his own way of facilitating due to, to the previous um, education. So I would uh, highly recommend to, to do it. Um, and already it depends on on you when you will start facilitating and when you you will feel that you already can um, can do it for somebody else okay yeah and did you think the four days or the five days were too short too um long? it depends for whom for example if for um someone who is at the beginning yeah. and who haven't done a lot of work in in constellations then it's too short Mm, but if uh, it's for some somebody who already has some background, then it's, yeah, it, it could be maybe plus one more day, yeah. one more day, but, or two, but that's, that's, um, but for sure not shorter, like shorter than, no, even no, no. Rest, no, for sure. Well, no, what I also see is that some people, we can, you can also make the, the, the context a little bit smaller, like we do one on one constellation and we just, touch the surface a little bit. And, and that already gives your clients a lot of insight. And other people with a lot of background and a lot of experience, they say, okay, let's do a large constellation in a group of 80 people. So it, it really depends on uh, also on the context that you create for yourself. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Victoria. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you very much. Have a great evening and well, Maybe I see you somewhere in my trainings uh, or somewhere else. Okay. Yeah. Bye -bye. yeah thank you. Bye.